you're you're a Jets reporter, obviously. You're around the team a lot. Who do you think the Jets are drafting this year? It's like, it, from what I've seen, fans either want Jerry Judy or an offensive lineman, and it seems very split in the fan base between who the team should go with. Well, I think right now those wishing for a receiver are going to be very disappointed because Joe Douglas in his uh, opening draft, in his pre-draft remarks, which were a couple weeks ago, he mentioned how important it is to almost quote unquote stockpile offensive linemen. And the Jets are a team that has really, you know, neglected the offensive line position over the past few years. Like last year, for example, remind me, I'm sure you're familiar with this team, Lauren, the 27 New York Giants. Remember what the Giants did in the off season when in that 2017 off season, they were coming off the playoff spot there uh they get they lost in green bay but they brought in brandon marshall drafted edmund ingram re-signed jason pierre paul and also drafted the closest thing at the time there was to an eli manning successor in you know what i'm talking about davis webb was it davis Nailed webb it. or kyle Oletta was, that year nope it was it was davis webb, it was kyle davis Lala. webb. okay yeah. lyle Oletta was after lyle now Lala. neither of them are with the team <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's absolutely right. So, um, so basically, what the Giants didn't did right there, it was what I like to call they bought themselves a Lamborghini, but they ignored the mold damage in the basement, and that's what the Jets did by bringing in Le'Veon Bell, bringing in Le'Veon Bell and C.J. Mosley last year. They bought themselves a flashy new toy to work with, but instead they ignored the essentials because if there's mold damage in the basement, it's going to affect the entire house from there on out. And the Jets neglected to truly address the offensive line. I mean, they did make some. They did make some moves for a change. They brought in. Kalecchio Semele via trade. That one didn't work out. They finally drafted an offensive lineman within the first two days of the draft in Chuma Idaga. But the thing is, Idaga was the first offensive lineman the Jets had drafted within the draft's first three rounds since Vladimir Dukas back in 2009. And Joe Douglas, when he took over the team in late summer or late, by, late in the offseason by NFL standards anyway, he basically made a commitment to the offensive line immediately by convincing Ryan Khalil to come out of retirement. That one didn't work out, but yeah. it, showed, it, it didn't it didn't work out, but it showed that he was willing to, you know, address the offensive line, unlike the negligence on display in the, in the Mike McCagney. And I'm sorry if I'm monologuing, by the way. No, no, you're good. You're good. It's very informative. Um, but it, it, and he also traded the team's seventh rounder for Alex Lewis, a trade with the Baltimore Ravens, who actually has been re-signed and is expected to play a larger role in the offensive line this season. So right now, McCann, not McCann, Douglas is planning to, you know, address this offensive line, I believe. And you saw it this offseason. They didn't get necessarily the guys they wanted. Joe Thune signed with New England, for example, or re-signed with New England on a franchise tag, for example. And there were some other guys, Jack Conklin, they missed out on. But in terms of consolation prizes, they did actually pretty well. They brought in Connor McGovern, for example. They brought in uh, Van Roten from Carolina, Greg Van Roten. They brought in George Fan from Seattle, who all of whom are expected to play roles on the starting line this offseason. And I think, too, that this is going to continue in the draft. And I think their number one pick right now is going to be Jedrick Willis out of Alabama, who the Giants have had their eye on, too. As yeah, well. I was wondering, do you think he's going to go? Like, who, which offensive lineman do you think is going to be there at 11? That's where they're drafting, right, 11? Yes, the Jets okay. are currently saying the 11th pick. There have been discussions, by the way, with the Atlanta Falcons trading down. I think if you're the Jets – uh, I think you shouldn't try to trade out of the quote unquote lottery selection of the NFL draft. I know we don't really talk about a lot of things in terms of lottery when it comes to the NFL draft. But I'm talking about like the top 20 picks. You get it, obviously, the teams that yeah. didn't make so. I think that Willis will be there. I think that this draft is, ex is exceptionally deep in receiver and offensive line. I think that the top receivers, the guy, the Jerry Judy's, the CD Lambs are going to be gone by the time the Jets pick at 11. Oh, because wow. I think, yeah, I think they will be gone by then because offensive line, in my opinion, is probably the most underrated major position in the North American major sports, maybe in all of global sports. Because yeah. let's face it, offensive line, it doesn't, quote, move the needle in terms of fan reaction. Like when, yeah. when, you, when you cut to the draft parties, do you see people going nuts over on offensive yeah. linemen? <laughs> really no. not really like remember when the Jets drafted to Brickshaw Ferguson all those years ago everyone was upset they didn't go after Matt Leiner in that draft and that turned out to be a good move yeah. and you know 
people don't often wear the offensive lineman jerseys. I think Nick Mangold was an exception, of course. Fergus was yeah. also an exception, of course, in New York. But at the same time, offensive linemen, they're guys who rarely, if ever, show up in the team box score. I mean, how do you do that? You catch a tackle, tackle eligible pass. You recover a fumble in the red zone. You make an, you make a tackle on an interception or, or a fumble recovery. So they're not, you know, they're not the flashiest moves, obviously. And teams want to bring in that. But when you're the Jets, these are some, this is something you have to do after years of offensive line negligence. And I think Willis is going to be that guy because I think his right tackle experience is really going to pay off well. I think he had a very strong NFL combine, and I think this is the type of guy that the Jets are going to go in the future with because, you know, you have two, uh, you have two backfield saviors right now in Sam Darnold and Le'Veon Bell. And we saw what happened when you don't protect, protect them. Darnold got hurt in his rookie season, cost him three games. Le'Veon Bell put up the worst numbers of his career in a 3.2 yardage average. It also reminds me, going back to that 2017 offseason, what the Los Angeles Rams did. Todd Gurley had the worst numbers of his career, so the Rams made several moves on the offensive line. They bid farewell to Greg Robinson, and they brought in Andrew Whitworth, who Jerry Reese later said that season there was not a place for on that Giants team, and that, frankly, could not have been further from the truth. Yeah. So. <laughs> and the Rams started themselves a little mini run. They won. The, they made it to the playoffs that year, and they made it to the Super Bowl the next season. So I think that the Jets are going to go offensive line with this first round pick, and it shouldn't worry fans because this draft is very, very deep at receiver. When Definitely, guys like, yeah. When guys like KJ Hamler, uh, Donovan Peoples Jones, uh, another one, Brent, uh, uh, um, Pittman Jr. Yes, uh, I'm thinking of the receiver from uh, Arizona State. His name escapes me right now. But uh, Brandon, uh, Brand- Brandon, Ar- uh, I, 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 if, if he has a he has a name. Uh, he has a name. Obviously. He has a name. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, that kid from Arizona State. So I think that um, I think that this is going to be uh, Brandon Ayuk. That's it. Okay. Um, Brandon yeah. Ayuk from Arizona State. He's certainly going to be up for consideration at that pick as well. Chase Claypool is another one from Notre Dame. So oh I yeah, I've seen that- a lot of Giants mocks with uh yes. taking him in like the third or fourth or something but yeah sure i don't no, know if he's gonna go that far if, I, if he's gonna fall that far he had a really good combine he really did he really did but then again when these guys are second or third are day two picks in in this draft that's when you know it's such a, re- a deep receiver class so yeah i think that i think that the answer can be found and i think another one to keep an eye on day three for 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 example two is uh Joe Reed out of Virginia. I think that he has a a very good skill set in the Jets that he can be a good slot receiver and end zone option. Over the past two seasons, he's put up 14 touchdown passes, seven each, and he can also solve the Jets' kick return woes. When Andre Roberts left last year to go to Buffalo, their kick return game fell from third to 22nd in terms of average, and guys couldn't really get it done back there. Vincent Smith kind of had some late momentum in the late stages and but other guys like Ty, Mon- Ty Montgomery never found a true spot in the rotation be it running back or returner and Braxton Berrios couldn't pick up the slack so I think that uh if they bring in Reed they fill in two of their needs right then and there I think special teams is something the Jets really should focus on as well in this draft I think another day three option for example would be Rodrigo Blankenship that kicker out of Georgia yeah He's- Rodrigo with the glasses Yes, yes, the bespectacled <laughs> wonder from Georgia. He's been a staple there. He's been very reliable. And the Jets, you know, their kicker spot was anything but reliable when Jason yep. Meyer left last left last offseason. Um, and when you're the Jets, I think having a kicker is so necessary because now there, a bit of a disclaimer. I ha- I am a bit biased because I used to be a long snapper, so a little special team <laughs> bias there. Um, but here's the thing. Uh, T- today, today's NFL seems to be trying anything they can to eliminate special teams' role in the game, or at least greatly diminish it a little bit. I think that's unintentional, by the way, but you see it in things like, you know, moving the kickoff up, although I think the XFL did a very solid job in uh, getting a bit of a compromise going there. Uh, you saw it in the Alliance of American Football, they eliminated the kickoff entirely. So I think that, and the NFL is trying to not only move the kickoff up, but they all they already did move the kickoff up, but they're also trying to incentivize touchbacks moving up five yards and like now touchbacks you start to twenty five rather oh, than yeah. twenty. 
and also the extra point has taken on a bit of a smaller importance. They moved it back to the 15, but two point conversions are set up from the two. Analytics departments dictate that you should go for two more often. You should go for it on fourth and one, fourth and two, once you get inside, you know, the 40, uh, your own 40 yard line. So special teams does, has taken on a bit of a diminished role in today's NFL. But when you're the Jets and you have an unproven offense that struggles to reach the end zone, Special teams is extremely important because you need to have healthy drives end in some form of points, and you weren't getting that with the inconsistency at the kicker spot last season.